Hi guys, just a little something that's rather interesting. Um, I bought this kit the other day uh, from our local electronic supply store. Just a JCAR kit, a um, frequency generator. This one here is the frequency adjustment and this one here is your trigger level. Um, I have that set on about 5 volts at the moment and I am on about 530 hertz. We have our 12 volt positive input and our zero, zero volt ground. Zero volt ground here and then of course our positive output. The ground is common. Um, it's hooked up through the tracks. So um, we can either hook the ground of our circuit to here or to the battery itself. Of course our 12 volt battery, positive and negative. <coughs> now this is just a little something I made up. Um, been fooling around with inductors and that, as you would know. And I was just going to try something a little different with this one. Uh, this one here is going to be our positive input pin, <coughs> which is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, as you can see it's got the vertical copper strips on it. So that's how all these are joined that way. So we've got our positive input pin goes across this orange lead, goes to the positive rail of the three LEDs which are hooked in parallel. And of course this one here is our negative pin which will go to our ground. And that of course comes across and goes across the negative rail of the LEDs. Now on the negative rail I've got a diode uh, blocking a positive charge going to the negative side of this cap so that will only take a negative charge that way and then from the positive input I'm going to the positive side of the cap I'm using a small, it's only a 3 ohm resistor just to take out um, a hard hit when I first fire the system up um, and the cap drawing all the current which may blow out the 555 primer chip so this cap here is purely to show us the voltage um, that's going into the system and of course this meter here we're going to be use, using as the current that's going into the system. Now on the positive side of the LEDs I have another diode which actually is blocking the positive um, current from going into the negative side of the diode and I'll explain why I've done that in a little while. The positive side of this cap then goes to the negative input or the ground from here to here is actually going to be the positive side of the cap. A little strange I know but you'll see why uh, shortly. And the reason I have this diode here to take any negative charge and although that sounds a bit strange coming off the positive side of the LED rail is because here we have our bifilar Tesla pancake coil as you can see we come from the inside and we go back to the second one on the outside with this wire so it is wound as it should be and it is a nice little performer I've used it on some other experiments and decided to try it on this one. I'm going to fire the system up and then our negative and positive outputs um, the negative and positive side of the LEDs is going to be hooked up to our Tesla pancake coil. So this meter here I'm going to take the red lead and hook it to the positive output of our signal generator and then of course the other side of our amp meter will go to the positive input of the system. Uh, we are set on the milliamp scale. Now this one here, I'm going to do it ask about face. I'm going to take the red lead which is the uh, positive input to the amp meter and I'm going to place it onto the ground side 
with the zero volt side of our signal generator. And then of course this side here, the other side of the ammeter will go to the negative for the ground input to this circuit here. And of course um, our yellow lead goes to the 12 volts plus input and then our black line to ground. We'll turn our meters on. Now what we should see is this meter reading our current input to the system and this meter here should read the same and it should say negative because we've got it hooked up back to front. So we turn it on and indeed it does. It's negative, negative 190 microamps. So our system is using 190 microamps at the moment. And as you can see by the brightness of the LEDs, nothing too exciting. This cap here, as I explained, <coughs> is going to be uh, working in the same way as our second battery does in a solid state Bedini system, or for that matter a pulse motor system, but um, we are not going to be hooked up to this battery as we are in those systems is actually going to be the other way around. So we'll hook up our pancake coil. <coughs> now what, what I want you to watch of course the brightness of the LEDs. This current draw will go up and I want you to watch what this meter here says. Um, and also keep in mind we have the red lead, the positive input to the amp meter on the zero volt rail which is why it's reading a ne negative voltage, uh, negative current because it's around the wrong way. <coughs> so we'll go ahead and hook up the other leg of the pancake coil and this is just across the LEDs or the input of the circuit. <coughs> and that is what we have happen. So we're on about 5.5 milliamps on the input and now we're reading 6.92, nearly 7 milliamps in the wrong direction on the negative side of the circuit. As you can see, the LEDs are fairly bright. And that is three of them hooked in parallel. Now what we're going to do is um, this is where that diode that's in the wrong direction comes into play. When this coil collapses, it pulls the positive rail of the LEDs down below to zero volts. The sending is making our negative side a positive potential when this coil collapses with every pulse. So what we'll do now is I'm going to place a load on the cap that is collecting our um, kickback from the collapsing coil and uh, you'll see two things and I'm just going to hook this up and show you those two things if you watch the meters as you can see that LED is quite bright and in no way affects the brightness of those LEDs either. And the reason for this is you would have noticed that the current that was going in the wrong direction actually went up and that current that was going in the right direction that's feeding the system actually went down. So um, a very interesting effect. It's with the uh, blue LED disconnected, which is on our, um, people call it back EMF from the coil, but it's not the back EMF, it's just the uh, kickback from the collapsing field around the coil. And hook it back up again.
So you can see our input current drops down when we place the load on the um, kickback from this coil and the reverse current goes up to compensate for the load that we place onto it. So very interesting. We'll hold this one up and I'll disconnect the blue LED and you can see in no way does it affect the brightness of the white LEDs. So we can take a load from it without affecting the brightness of the LEDs and also dropping the current draw even further. So at the moment those four LEDs currently running on 2.45 milliamps so um, it does have me a little bit confused as to why it's doing that but uh, as you can see it surely does the meter has once again gone to negative 200 microamps because it is hooked up the wrong way around and our input meter from the positive side is reading our 20 to 19 or 200 to 200 microamps once again when we hook up the uh, I feel our coil this does indeed go up but the current on the back side reverses and our negative becomes a positive and our positive becomes the negative side. So let's hear your thoughts on that one guys. Uh, there you have it. Oh, just for uh, interest sake, show you the input voltage. Which happens to be 4.9 exactly volts. That's with our uh, pancake coil hooked up 3.99 volts at 5.84 milliamps. Here's our input current. And we have 6.78 milliamps. Measure the voltage across this cap. Voltage is 10 point, 10 point 09, 07, 06, 07, 10 point 06, 07 volts. And uh, like I showed you before, place the load on that cap doesn't affect the brightness of the LEDs but it does drop the current draw down dramatically. So anyway, let's hear your thoughts on that. How do you get a um, reverse voltage and a reverse current? Um, and it just has to do with the inductor collapsing and the voltage potential going down further than the voltage we're putting into it, which is about five volts and so then our positive rail then becomes a negative voltage and our negative input becomes a positive potential alright that's it for me for this one uh, enjoy <laughs>